Hey gang, uh, uh, this is part two of the central limit theorem. We're just going to kind of recap what we did yesterday, you guys. So uh, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and get started here. So um, uh, to find the probability that a sample mean, so that's what x bar is, is our sample mean, will lie in a given interval of the sample distributions, of the sample mean sampling distributions, and we use the z-score formula. Does this uh, look familiar? The only difference is, is this is my this is my uh, my sample mean right here okay this is the mean of these guys right here which is the same as the population mean and then um, uh, the sample standard deviation is this right here And remember from yesterday our sample standard deviation was the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size which was n okay so our formula becomes uh, that right there okay so I always like to do this first and you get a decimal, you guys, and when you get that decimal, then we do the, the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation right there, okay? So here we go. The graph here shows the length of time people spend driving each day. We randomly select drivers ages 15 to 19. I think that's kind of a, I don't know, 15-year-old drivers? Maybe not in, well, I guess you can get a permit if you're 15 and a half, but... Anyways, let's overlook that part. So uh, we randomly select 50 drivers uh, ages 15 to 19. What is the probability that the mean time they spend each day uh, driving is between 24.7 and 25.5 minutes? Okay, and we'll assume that this is our population standard deviation is 1.5. Okay, this is N right here. And so here's the mean for our 15 to 19. It's 25 minutes right there, okay? So from the central limit theorem, you guys, that our sample size is greater than 30. If it's greater than or equal to 30, then that means uh, by the central limit theorem that the sampling distribution of our sample means is, will be approximately normal. Okay, so we're going to find our z-scores for this number and this number right here using our z-score formula, okay? Now remember, our sample means equals our population means, okay? And we want to find uh, it's between this number and this number. So these are our x bars for both of them. We're going to put an x bar 24.7 there and then 25.5 there also. Okay, and so our sample standard deviation is this action right here. So it's the uh, population standard deviation uh, divided by the square root of n, which is our, our sample size right there. Okay, so I get about 0.21213. So that's going to go underneath each one of those right there, okay? Always draw your bell-shaped curve. Sorry, I wish I had a better picture. Um, I'm on my prep period and the class next door to me gets kind of loud sometimes. They have an activity going, so that's the noise you're hearing in the background. Anyway, so remember, this is our mean right here. Our mean was 25 minutes right there, and we want to know between uh, 24.7, which is uh, to the left of 25, and then 25.5, which is to the right of 25. Okay, so here's our mean time in minutes. This says, sorry about the blurriness, the distribution of sample means with n equal to 50. Okay, sample means means plural, so we're doing um, uh, several sample sizes with n equal to 50. Okay, and if we do that, our central limit theorem allows us to uh, normalize this. Okay, so here we go. Let's calculate each z-score. Okay, so, so 24.7 minus that 25 over that decimal, and then this minus the 25 over the decimal. So our z-scores are going to be from negative 1.41 uh, to 2.36, okay? So the probability of um, our minutes be, to be between 24.7 and with our sample means and 25.5 will be the exact same probability with uh, z being between negative 1.41 and 2.36, okay? So um, uh, what we do here is we look up uh, using our table, now, my kids haven't gotten a graphing calculator yet, so we're still using the table. I know you can get them in your graphing calculator also, so you guys that have them, great. We're going to be working on those in a few weeks anyways. So we look up 2.36, and that gives us the whole area from 2.36 all the way past. And the 1.41 gets us the area from here all the way past. So what we do is we subtract this number minus this number, and that's going to give us the leftover stuff in the middle right there. Okay, so when we subtract those guys, we get uh, 0.9116. And then now what are you supposed to do? 
Well, we're supposed to interpret that, okay? So that's roughly 91% uh, will have a mean driving time of the ages of, uh, if, let me start over, of the samples of 50 drivers, ages 15 to 19, about 91% uh, is going to have a mean driving time that's somewhere between 24.7 and 25.5 minutes, okay, as shown over here, okay? So, all right, so this implies that uh, uh, that assuming that the value of a mean is 25 uh, minutes is correct and uh, then about 9% of the of other samples are going to have a mean that's going to be lying outside of that interval. Alright, hope that makes sense. If you are in my class, that will be your assignment. Take care.